Okay, so generally with your classes, uh, it's just basically snake case. And snake case is where we just write, uh, when we've got our words, we just put a hyphen in between them. So snake case like this. And, and that's basically how, how you should name your, your CSS variables. As to how you, if you should use like BEM, that's, that's another subject. But after, after this, I'll look into that. Okay, so I think everybody that's going to be joining is here today. So let me just kick it off once again. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Martin. I'm a front-end slash full-stack web developer. I focus more on the front-end side. Uh, I love working in React. Um, I've been working with HTML and CSS since I was actually a kid. I've actually still got my website up, like probably when I was like 12. Um, so I know HTML and CSS quite well and how to navigate my way around it. Um, and in this session today, we're going to be looking at... Some pretty cool stuff. This is like a special treat compared to the normal CSF, CSS stuff that we work with. Uh, we're going to be building out as much as we can of this page. Um, and a lot of what you're actually seeing here, uh, for example, this, this side part here, the shadow, that's actually not an element or anything. Oh, sorry, that's, that's not like part of the picture. That is actual CSS. That's a gradient where it disappears and it reappears. Um, and then the corners of the menu that you see on the on the side here, that's absolute positioning. And then not just that, the, the actual menu itself is just a piece of leather, but we add a whole bunch of cool effects to it and we get to that point. Okay, so I guess let's get started with this. Uh, actually, wait, before I get started, are there any other questions um, before I kick it off? Yep, I am recording. Yeah, so uh, the, the recording will be made available most likely by tomorrow. Uh, we're recording in 4K quality, so it, YouTube takes about up 24 hours to process it. So unfortunately, we can't share it straight away. We have to wait for the processing to finish. Um, okay, great. Let's let's get underway. Right. So, um, the first thing I want to discuss is uh, CSS and Photoshop layers, or CSS and an art programs layers. We did touch on this previously in another video that I did, uh, but now we're going to sort of flesh it out a bit more. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we actually had that menu. Let me just go and grab it quickly. So hold on. Okay, so there's a menu over here. So as I mentioned earlier, there's actually just a single layer of, I think it's like crocodile leather or something of the sort. And that is then used to um, get this sort of background. Um, so what I try and usually teach people as well as for myself, uh, you really need to try and think of CSS as layers in an art program. Uh, when when they started writing HTML and CSS and all of that, that, there's a specification, this really, really long document that sort of sets out all the rules for people to follow. Um, and when they came to writing the CSS rules, they, they'd had to come from some kind of standpoint or like some starting point. And if you look at, at a lot of uh, sort of the CSS, you'll see that it, a lot of it is actually borrowed from art applications because they, they existed before the time. Um, so let's have a look at, at the things we can typically do in an art program and how we can actually relate that to CSS. So I've got the leather over here. And the first thing I'm actually going to want to do, um, and by the way, this is Photoshop. You don't, you don't really need to know Photoshop. You just got to sort of know that we've got layers like this in the corner, and then we just got layers. Um, so what I'm going to first do is I'm going to go and open uh, the effects for Photoshop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a color overlay over my uh, over that image. So you can see that it's actually got a bit darker. Let me go and make the opacity 100%. Okay, so we've actually got this layer that's on top here. Um, and then I can actually bring the opacity down. And then slowly we actually got our image actually showing. Now you can do the exact same thing in CSS. If you have a container or a div on top of another div with absolute positioning, then you can actually go and just slide down the opacity and you've got the exact same effect that you're actually seeing in this art application. So it's actually directly relating to it. Um, so, okay, so that's, that's we're just going to go and put an, a color overlay like that so that it's sort of a bit darker instead of the sort of vibrant uh, yellow. I don't really like that. Um, so I'm going to go sort of something like this. It's not going to look exactly the same like that. Uh, let's, let's see what we can actually go. Let's go like with it. Yeah, let's do this today. Let's go with like a pinkish, pinkish leather color. Okay, so we got we got that effect going. Um, so now the next thing I actually want to go and add to this uh, is if you have a look at the image that I've got here, you'll see that it's dark around the rims. 
around the rims there and then it gets lighter to the middle so a lot of this is going to be clever trying to be clever with with transparency and layers uh, okay so what, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go and add another effect to this which is going to be um, a gradient overlay and that's actually really set up for me okay so usually usually you've got a linear gradient where it just goes from one side to the other but then in art applications as well as um in css uh we actually we can change the type of gradient and we actually get a, ra a radial gradient now um, i'm actually going to reset this okay sorry that's super bright but i want to reset it so you can actually see the process going to take place here so it's got what i was working on earlier just to make sure that i'm got all the content correct so i'm going to go and make this a gradient that's just going to have two colors okay so now that's a gradient that just goes from black to black um, and it's it's a, a radial gradient, so it starts in the black in the middle here, and it goes to the black on the outside. And then what I'm going to do is, on one of them, uh, the one that's on the outside, I'm going to turn the transparency, sorry, it's the one on the inside, I'm going to turn the transparency off. Okay, so now, if you have a look here, we've got like a really, really cool effect going on. We've got sort of like the outsides are sort of... Um, you know darker and it comes to the middle but it, it looks pretty good it's, it's it's not exactly the same effect as this but if anything i actually might even argue this one on the left actually looks a little bit better um okay so we've actually got this going now and then one final layer i'm going to sort of add here and, and by the way when i say layers in this art application this is these are all effects on one actual layer but in your css the color overlay that is a div that has had the transparency adjusted to be transparent. Then you have another div on top of that one um, that's absolutely positioned, and you you turn that into the gradient overlay. So you can replicate this exact image over here in 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 your CSS. So that that's why it's important. Don't see CSS as this sort of uh, you know difficult language that's hard to move things around and position things. You know, there's always this joke from typically back-end developers that CSS is complicated and, and you know, things just don't go where it is. Don't, don't fall into that sort of that pit. Think of CSS as like an amazing way to translate your art applications and your styling into HTML and CSS. Um, okay, so then there's one more that I wanted to add here, and I actually can't remember what it is. Um, that was the drop shadow. So we want to have a drop shadow. It's actually a bit um, bland at the moment. Uh, Dahlia saying use, I, I can never pronounce this right, Vignette, Vignette, I don't know how to pronounce it, where I think it makes it sort of like that, uh, like orangey color. Uh, you, you do want to do that. And I think in Photoshop, uh, sorry, in CSS, there is a property for that, um, like sepia. Uh, so look, let's let's get back, I'll, I'll get back to that when we get to filters. Um, okay, so the, the last one that I said is going to add a drop shadow. So if you look at the image over here, there's a drop shadow. Um, it's It's very, very subtle. There's there's a trick to shadows like when whenever a person starts in CSS um, and and web sorry graphic design when they use a shadow it is always overpowering there is this shadow that is you you want people to know there's a shadow there but to really really do good shadows you must almost not notice there's a shadow like there should be a shadow but you shouldn't it shouldn't like draw attention to it that there's a shadow okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just go and add a, a drop shadow to this. Um, and once again, CSS has got the exact same thing for you. It's called box shadow. Um, there's, there's even actually more powerful shadows if you look at SVG filters, but I'm not going to discuss that right now. Uh, so I'm just going to add a drop shadow. And now at the bottom here, you can see that there is just a very, very subtle shadow there. And it just basically makes it pop. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, firstly, I'm just going to disable this so it's not it's sort of detracting from anything. Um, I'm going to turn off all of our styling. So we've gone from that. And that's what we've turned it into. So just CSS alone, you can go and do that with your code. Um, and that's exactly what we've actually gone and we've done over here. Is that we've just basically taken this very, very basic um, leather picture. And then we turned it into something that actually looks pretty good in, in, in my opinion. So before we actually start boarding it out, um, let's let's just start talking about um, how HTML and all that works. So that when I start doing the absolute position, you know exactly what, what I'm talking about. Okay, so usually when you actually got... Uh, HTML and you drop an element in it's going to have display block so let's say there was a div here and you got your content in then you'd go and you'd put another one in and it's going to follow this flow of this document going downwards you know like when you Microsoft Word you, you 
you write something and you push enter, it's all flowing downwards because that's that's the flow of the document. So if I was to add another div in, there's going to be it's going to drop down to the bottom and then it's going to drop down to the bottom. But now this is limiting, you know, like what if we don't actually want to keep following that flow? So what these elements usually, sorry, uh, what we can do is we can go and set position absolute um, on an element. Let me just write that out actually. So what you can set is position absolute. And what that does is basically it lets an element break out of that document flow. Um, and then what happens is it you can give X and Y coordinates. It's not really X and Y. You basically give it top, left, bottom, and right. You tell it how far you want it from the left and how far you want it from the top. Um, and it's literally top, left, right, or bottom, the actual values that you put in. So if I had top zero and left, so I'll move this in a moment, left zero, uh, this would actually go and put this at the top here. So we're saying it needs to be right at the top um, on, on sort of like the Y, and on the left, we want to be all the way on the zero. Um, okay, so there's something that's that's really important though when we, we set position absolute. So say we were to set it, it's automatically going to go, and we put, sorry, top zero and left zero, it's automatically going to go to the top corner of here. Um, I'm just trying to think of the best way to explain this. When it comes to these values, zero, um, that we're typing in for top, left, bottom, and right, it needs to be relative to a parent. Now, usually, it's going to go, um, just imagine this white background is your body of an HTML document. It's automatically going to go and use the body for what it's relative to. So if we were to say right zero, it's going to be all the way to the right of your document. But now, what if you want it to be relative to this element inside here. Um, and that's that's actually fairly simple. Sorry, let me just turn that off. Um, we just go and set position relative to this element. And if you set the CSS position relative on this element, what happens then is that this element will actually use it. It will use this as its parent that it's going to be absolute position to. So if you were to say right zero, it's going to get to the end of this over here. And if you say bottom zero, it'll be over here and then left zero over there. Um, it's actually what I was going to show you with, with this image over here. So let's let's just use this for an example. This element is nested inside of this uh, lighter blue element. And this lighter one has got position uh, relative. And this has got position absolute. Now, this is going to be constrained to this lighter element over here. So if you said right, it's going to be here. Yeah, and then it's bottom right there. And, and left zero, bottom zero to be there. Uh, so with this being able to like be absolute position, you, you could just create anything now. Now you can just make anything you want. You can you can create the most complex artwork. It's it's most likely not going to load very well, um, and it's not going to be uh, probably not going to load on all of your devices so well and all of that. But you can. You know the the ability is there with with sort of the way that positioning works in CSS. You there is just so much you can actually create. Um, and if you just think about Photoshop layers, it just basically goes to show you that anything you can make in Photoshop, basically with vectors, then you can basically make it in CSS. So. Where, where does this become helpful? So let's have a look at, we had our menu here, right? So we can have these little corner pieces like this. So what if we were to take this corner piece and then put the position absolute to this outside one? Then we could say bottom right or bottom zero, which puts it to the bottom here. And then we could say right zero and it puts it to, to that side. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Um, and there you go. So now you've got this. And then, and then you could also do a little bit of fine tuning. So you do like maybe minus four pixels and you could do, yeah, minus five pixels. And then it's actually sitting on the outside like that. Um, but let's just, let's just put it back to where it was. Okay, so it's sitting like that. Now we want to do the top corner. So what, what do we do about this in Photoshop? Uh, sorry, in CSS. Do we go and we go into an art program and then we're going to rotate all of this so that it's going to fit what we need? No, we're not going to do that. In CSS, we can just simply rotate it. Okay, so now we can use just the one image that only has to get loaded once. And we could use this throughout our actual application. We just got to use CSS to transform and rotate it. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll just transform it. And, and transform is, once again, borrowing from these art programs. When I push Control T in Photoshop, I can now start scaling this. You can see there's a bounding box that is shown here. And I can... Um, I could drag drag these things out and I can actually start rotating it. So CSS has got the exact same thing. You've got transform and the transform property has got all its own things. So you can scale it like this. You can rotate it. You can skew it. 
Um, I don't know the shortcuts to skew in Photoshop. Uh, yeah, so what we can do then is we rotate it. I'm going to hold shift so that it just rotates exactly how I want it. Um, and then we put it there. So we've now reused one of our art assets that we don't actually have to need to go and load it again. Um, and basically we are now matching that original design. Sorry, this one here, where we've actually got these corner pieces like that. Um, and then this one, I don't know if we're going to have enough time for it, but this is also, this is actually just a gradient. Um, this is just a gradient that goes from dark to nothing and then dark again and then a hard line. Um, and then you've actually got what is like a pseudo 3D effect. And I've shown people in the past and none of them, they actually thought that this is actually part of the image. Yet, no, it's not. It's actually the CSS. Um, okay, so let's actually start building this art. We've got quite a bit of work ahead of us. Um, I must apologize. We might go over um, one hour. But if, if, if we do hit that point, you are free to leave and you can just watch the rest of the video at a later stage if you are actually interested in it. Okay, so let's, let's get started. So this is actually just a basic HTML page. Um, if you aren't aware, okay, so let's just make it nothing. You put uh, exclamation mark, and this is an emit. You drag it down, push the down arrow, it shows you what code's going to get generated. So let's push tab, and then we go, we've got our HTML page already generated. I'll change the title to um, session, save it, and um, let's refresh. So I can see session is uh, popped up there. And so now the only thing we need to do is just link a style sheet. So what I'll do is I'm going to, I've got a styles folder here. Let me go in one bigger and I'm going to uh, create a style.css file. So this is a styling file. This is where we do all of our styling inside of it. Um, and then we've got our HTML file and this is more like the structure. So a, 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 a metaphor I've often heard is, is HTML is like the, um, the skeleton, the skeletal structure. And then the CSS is sort of all the features that a person has like hair color, eye color, and all of that. Okay, so we've got our style file. We just haven't imported yet. We need to link this file to our HTML document so that the HTML can actually use it. Um, so all we do is we need to do another emit. We're going to say um, link. And then you can see all these different options here. And the code it generates at the bottom. So I'm just going to go link CSS, push tab. And then we don't we don't have that as our file name. Um, whenever it comes to linking a file and, and writing the file name out, don't... Don't try and do it by hand. Rather, let auto-completion do its job. Um, so I'm going to go dot slash, and there you go. So here's the auto-completion. And it's going to go and select the file that I want. Instead of me typing it in and then maybe making a mistake, maybe I put a capital S or something. Um, rather, let auto-completion find the file for you. Then you know that there's going to be no mistakes. Okay, so I'm going to save that. And then over here, just to test that everything is working, I'm just going to set HTML body. Uh, to have a background of just let's just go yellow okay so i can see that it's working okay so let's get underway so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a basic reset uh which is on the body there is a built-in margin um i guess i mustn't hang around these features too much but basically your browser's got a built-in margin that it applies to your page we're actually going to just test this out um so without that margin You'll see that it's actually, there's a space here. I'll zoom in a tiny bit. There's a space here. We don't want that space. So we just override that margin to be zero. Now it's not going to be in the way. Um, okay. So the next thing now is to go and set our view height. Okay. Okay. So all I'm doing here is... Sorry, my daughter just came home, so she might just be just a little bit of noise. Um, so all I've done is I've gone and set my body and my HTML to have 100 of view art so that it, it actually goes and occupies the entire page. And we basically are now ready to actually kick this off. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a page wrapper. I want to wrap around the whole page. So I'm just going to create a class here. Actually, let's, let's start here. So I'm going to say div dot page wrapper. And what we're doing here is a little bit of a trick with uh, HTML and CSS, or sorry, with VS Code. Um, you can put your element, and then if you put a dot and your class name, it's going to automatically generate this HTML for me. Um, so I'm just going to show you that page wrapper, and I'll push tab, and there you go. So it's actually fold that in. Um, for people that haven't started on HTML and CSS yet, don't, don't, don't be concerned. I know that this is going to be very foreign to you, but don't worry, in, in no time you're going to know and understand all of this. And you can always come back and watch these videos. 
Okay, so we're gonna have this page wrapper. Let's go now and uh, add our code for our page wrapper. Um, I want it to have a height of 100%, and I'm gonna just give it a background of Rebecca Purple. Save it, and let's see why we're not getting any code yet. Okay, so we've got the page wrapper in, it's gonna write test here. Okay, so we've got the page wrapper in. Um, let's bring that size back down to normal. Right, so now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be working on, on that menu. Um, so what we need to do now is create that menu. Sorry for the delay. Uh, okay. So the way that this is going to work, uh, let's just try to do it here, is that we're going to have, um, yeah, let's use this one. We're going to have one main wrapper on the outside, and then on the inside, we're gonna have things absolutely positioned. So remember we had that one um, sort of color overlay, that's gonna be one thing that's absolutely positioned. Then the next one is another div, and that's gonna be absolutely positioned on top of that one. So let's just make that a different color. Um, so I'm just gonna move them slightly so you can see there's different colors here. Uh, but these are basically all on top of each other. Then we'll have another one. Um, and then finally at the end, we will actually go and have our actual content um, that's displayed in this main content. So these are basically like styling underlays. Um, now, there's something I must I must mention is that you aren't going to usually be able to, you, you aren't going to usually be required to design stuff like this. This is very, very sort of niche doing sort of art in the CSS. You know, like it's not, it's not very often that people are going to ask you to build out something that looks, looks like this. Um, and a lot of it might even be SVG, which is scalable vector graphics. Um, and that's math it's stuff that's drawn with mathematics when, when you use the path tool. So don't think that every website we need to be doing tricks like that. That's not the case. This is more like we're just showing you some really cool stuff that you can do. Okay. So like I mentioned, we're going to have our main menu wrapper and then the stuff that's going to be um, contained in that. So what I'm going to add here is uh, menu, menu wrapper. Yeah. Sorry, naming things is like one of the hardest things in programming. Uh, so I'm gonna call it menu wrapper and let's save it. Okay, so we've got the menu wrapper added. Um, I'm just gonna change the color, the color of the font to white so that we can see it a bit better. Um, make sure that everything is resized. Sorry, I feel like it's just a little bit, okay. Um, okay, so we've got the menu wrapper coming. Okay. Let's just add the class for the menu wrapper. Just bear with me. I'll explain what we're doing in a moment. Okay, so there we've got our menu wrapper. Now we want this to be sitting in the middle of the page. So what we will do is we're just going to add display flex um, and have a justify content center. Um, remember, justify content is on the horizontal plane because it's a longer word. And then align items center and that is now going to center our menu right into the middle so let's inspect and then you'll see that it's always going to maintain its position in the middle um very common to basically do this this display flex justify content which is in the middle uh, sorry horizontal and align items is aligning it vertically um okay so we're slowly underway i just want to go and get the sizing for this correct i'm not too sure how big it should be um So I'll just realize something. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to give it a height of 100% and I'm going to give it a width of 100% instead of those hard-coded values. And that's going to cause it to go and stretch the entire page. Except what I want to do now is I want to give it a max height of, let's just say, 600 pixels and a max width of 600 pixels. Okay, so what I've done here is probably the biggest trick you'll ever come across when it comes to trying to get your code to be responsive, your pages to be responsive. So basically what we're saying is that this must grow to be 600, but it doesn't have to be, it can be smaller. So as we adjust this down, it's actually shrinking because we've got this height and width of 100%. So let's, let's just go and actually add a margin to this. Um, I'm actually gonna add a, sorry, padding to our page wrapper, padding of 20 pixels and save it. So now, now when I do this, there's gonna be a tiny gap. You can see there's a tiny gap here, okay? Um, so I know these, these colors are probably not very helpful. Okay. That should be a little bit better. Uh, okay. So we've got our, our sort of a menu wrapper going. Um, and now we can start 
not yet. We can um we can get our image in and then we'll start applying those effects. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add uh our background image. So let's just say menu background. And there's nothing in here. We don't we don't we're just using these divs as basically our sort of styling canvases. Okay, so I'll go over here and I'm just gonna write background. So excuse the toppers. Uh, when we do these videos, we have to zoom in on our screen and it's, it's sort of, it's quite a bit disorientating. Okay, so I'm going to go and have this menu background. And what this is going to be is, um, it's going to have that sort of that leather that we had earlier. Um, so what I'll do here is I'm just going to make the background red for now so I can see what is going on. And then about 100% and width 100%. Save it. Okay, so we've got this menu background that div inside of our menu wrapper. Um, and now what I'll go and do is I'm going to get a background image and it's going to be URL images, menu cover. Okay, so um, Roxanne's asked about this over here. So this is a comment. That's That's basically just for humans. The computer doesn't try and interpret this it doesn't run this code at all um it's basically for us to go and leave notes in our code and or comments like we call it uh so that we can we can um sort of a, what, what is the right way do we can basically like add notes to our code um so what i've done here by writing background is just to split my code so i know that this code after this point is just going to be for the background and then i'll write over here this is going to be um just for the main menu part so this is just for like sort of like headings in my code so I know that where I am working. But the, it's not going to appear in our CSS. It's not going to be understood by the computer. Um, that's that's why it's this green color. It's not The code's not going to run this. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so you can see I've actually got, we've got our background image and that's actually working great. Um, and yeah, that's, that's halfway there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually add position absolute on this background image um, and then I'm going to put left zero and top zero I should actually prefer those the other way well that's not right okay so now remember when I said to you that in Photoshop that uh, so when we've got this and when we typically go and use position absolute with top zero and left zero it's going to go to the top left corner here um, and that's what's happening in, in our in our example now is because I set the width to 100% and the height. So it goes and tries to fill up this whole thing. Okay. But if we were to go and put position relative on this container, then it's going to go and stick to this. And if I was to make it 100% width or not, it's going to just fill that container. Okay. So that's what's happening over here is it's filling the whole thing. But as soon as I go and add um, position relative... to the menu wrapper, now it's constrained to that. Sure, um, my, my, my shortcut keys are custom. So I will I will link a video after this that, that goes through the, through the custom shortcut keys. But I, let me very quickly go and tell you what I'm doing is, so I, I can't actually tell you what key I am using, but uh, for example, this is copy line down and then there is delete line. Um, those are the two sort of biggest ones that you should always have as a developer so that you can very quickly duplicate something and then very quickly remove it. Uh, but we've, we've actually got a whole video that discusses that and, and I think I'm not going to be able to finish if I do cover it now. So as soon as we're done, I'll, I'll, I'll jump into that. Um, okay, so we've got our menu like that. Now, the only thing I want to be doing here is I just want to... Do I actually want to do the border radius? No, I'm not, don't worry about that later. Okay, so we've got our background going. Now we're going to start with our first overlay. Remember on Photoshop, we had, uh, where was it? it was, yeah. Okay, so we had our first thing, which was that overlay, which was just like basically a pink sort of overlay to check. Like this, this yellow looks a bit uh, not so great. Um, so just we're just going to make it so that it goes that pinkish color. So let's go jump back to that and we'll do our first overlay. So there I'm duplicating line down. I'm going to say menu overlay one. Actually, background overlay one. And, and these class, classes might not be sort of the best named. Apologize for that. Tr trying to move a bit fast. Um, like with 
uh, naming variables, it's, it's not uncommon for a person to name something, one thing, and then to go back and change it and go back and change it 50 different times, just until they get it the exact way it should be. Um, so don't, don't be surprised, surprised if it actually does happen to you. Okay, so we've got our overlay. I'm going to go and just copy that class and I'm going to go and paste it here. And I'm going to say background blue. Okay, let's, I don't know if I saved my HTML. Let's try refresh. Oh, sorry. So I probably don't have. It's probably Z index. Okay. So I need to make this one position absolute as well. And let's save it. Okay, so there we go. So what was happening earlier is that because this other one is position absolute, it was sitting on top of, of our other layers. Whereas now we've basically, we, we've made this one absolute and this one absolute. And then they're going to be sitting on top of each other based on their order here. So if this one was over here, then the, the what do you call it? The one of the background is going to show on top. But so we actually want the background at the bottom. Okay, so we've got the blue there. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and say opacity. And I'm going to change it to 0 0.5 maybe. Okay, so you can see we're actually slowly getting to like a, you know, like a, I don't know what, what color that's going to be. Um, but so you can see we've actually got our overlay in place. Now I'm actually going to try some different colors here and see what we got. Maybe like a brown. I feel like we're back to where we started. Um, okay, so I'm going to go like that darker blue. I feel like it uh, has like a nice look to it. Okay, so you can see we've got the overlay there. Um, now I'm going to do the next overlay, which is the shadow overlay. Um, so actually, I'll just call it gradient instead of numbers. Okay, so we've got this gradient here. So let's go and take that. I'm just going to duplicate this and paste that code in there. Um, if you don't understand if you don't understand anything, please feel free to ask. Whoopsie, that wasn't meant to happen. Sorry. Okay, so we got Okay, we've got another another class that we've added here. Um and position absolute. Now this one we don't want opacity. And then let's just make the background green so we can see that it is actually in the document. Uh, I highly recommend that when you are doing your CSS and your HTML use visual feedback we've got a huge advantage when we do front-end development and i think it's one of the reasons i love it so much is that we get visual feedback when you're coding other things even desktop applications you don't get this visual feedback you're gonna have to debug your code and everything whereas in css and html we get this uh visual feedback uh in this case we uh, there's a question sorry do we usually only use divs um in in our html or should we be doing semantic html in this case, I'm not following semantics. This is just about examples here. Um, there's probably quite a bit that would actually go into this that you'd have to make it get ignored. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to cover that at this point. But in this case, we're not we're not looking at semantic HTML or semantically correct HTML. This is just uh, for for styling, basically. Okay. So moving on, we're going to go do the gradient. Okay. So we need to now get a gradient going for our CSS. Um, and I'm not going to try and figure this out for myself. I'm just going to go and use a gradient generator. So I'm just going to go and search CSS uh, gradient generator. Um, let me zoom that in for you. Okay, and then and then there's just a ton of a ton of things here. There's there's so many of them, um, and there's not one in particular I recommend. Although I do particularly like this website for gradients. Um, so when you usually got a gradient, what happens is that if you click, it creates a new point or color that that stores. Uh, fields for that particular color. Um, Robert, sorry, Rohit's asked, you know, how do we remember all this code? We don't. You don't remember all of it. To be very honest with you, you don't remember it. You can be a developer for 30 years. The, the, the important part is that you understand what it's doing, not what remembering all of the different things. Um, you just need to know how these things work. Then you can always just go and Google the answer and you can immediately apply it because you know how it works. But you aren't expected to remember all the different types of HTML tags, all the types of CSS. Uh, look, when you when you are working for three plus years, you're going to remember pretty much everything. You're not going to have to Google all of these, these divs and things. But it's not uncommon for a senior developer with plenty of years experience for them to go and Google uh, like the input tag to see all the properties that are available to them. 
Um, yeah, so don't don't freak out if you like can't remember all the stuff. You're not expected to remember all that stuff. I promise you, you're not expected to remember it. So in order for us to set absent to the children, we need to position relative to the parent. Okay, can, can I jump back to that in a moment? Let me sort out the gradients and then I'll hop into that. Okay, so usually when you've got uh, a gradient tool like this, you've got these, like I mentioned, um, and then what you can do is you can drag it down typically. Okay, in this case, I can't seem to drag it down. don't know why it's not doing anything. Maybe I need to do something else. Okay, I've just have to click them off over here. Usually you can drag them down and it makes them disappear. Okay, so I'm going to go and change this one to black, like we mentioned, um, and it needs to be a radial, and then the one needs to be transparent like i mentioned so this one i guess will make transparent okay so i'm just going to go and take that code i don't want to sit and try and figure this out for myself and i'm just going to go and pop it in there and save All right so let's go back here and there we go okay so now we've actually got um so me i hope i pronounced that correctly uh in real life it's graphic designer who does who does the design including colors about 20 years ago, when it came to doing websites, you would have like a web designer. And that person would sort of design the page, um, typically in something like DreamWorks. Uh, wait, is it Dream? Sorry, F File Dreamweaver and Fireworks. Um, and then you'd slice the images out. And, and then they'd also code the page. But these days, there's, there's, there's a lot that goes into UI slash UX design. That it's now they are seen as as two separate fields that you study. You can combine them. You can be a UI UX as well as a front end developer. Um, but in most cases, there's someone that's going to be doing the UI UX, and then there's going to be a front end developer that builds out the site. And and they they're separated. You get given the design um, in Figma or XD or whatever, then you have to build out that design. Um, but that's not to say there aren't jobs out there that combine the two together. Uh, but it is, as time goes on, they are separating quite quite a fair amount. Um, okay, so we've now got this gradient. Uh, I don't like completely how it's looking, so I'm just actually just going to change the opacity to 0 0.4 maybe. That's a little bit too much. Okay, so now you can see we've actually got, we've gone from... Um, we've gone from that to now this. Okay. And that's just CSS. There's no Photoshopping involved. There's no images that we're loading in. So there's no extra weight. Like There's not a, a much bigger payload to your code now. It's just a couple of more lines of CSS. Not a couple. It's a few, I guess it is a fair few more lines of CSS. But the payload, I can promise you now, is not going to increase by not, not even one kilobot uh, by going and doing your CSS like that. Okay, so we've got that part going. Now we need to go and look at what we can start doing next okay so what we're going to actually do now is let's get those corner images in like we demonstrated um in uh photoshop so i'm going to write corners here um and you don't have to separate your your code like this i'm just just demonstrating that you can okay so uh what i'm going to have is just a baseline corner so i guess i'll just call it corner um and we'll get to that code in a moment Okay, so we've got, our, we've got our main wrapper. Um, now we're actually going to have our actual content wrapper. So if you can remember in... Actually, we're not going to have a content wrapper yet. Sorry. Sorry, we're not going to have a content wrapper. So okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the image. Like I said, we're going to have a corner class here. And then inside here, we're going to have our image. So image source is equal to images menu corner piece. Um, and then you should always have an alt tag, even if it's empty, and then it's save. Um, okay, so now what's most likely happening is that our other content is absolutely positioned, so it's on top of this. We can't see it. Okay, so I'm just going to go and... Uh, just wondering if I should actually do the styling on the container or if I do the styling just on the image. Okay, we're just actually going to do the styling on the image. Um, so we, we're not even going to have the image in a container, we're just going to be moving the image around the screen. So I'm going to change the class is equal to corner. Let's save it. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go position absolute. And there you go. Okay. So now we can see, we can see that we've now got our, our corner piece in. Um, and now we can say right zero. So you can see it's immediately there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this. 
so we're gonna have two okay so actually we're not duplicating it sorry i don't i don't want to do it in a way that's confusing so we're gonna go and put this at the bottom okay so you can see that it's it's there um it's not 100 percent. so what we can do is we can start sort of like tweaking it a little bit so now you can see it's actually popped down a little bit and then right we're gonna maybe minus 10 pixels maybe a little bit more actually no that's great that's great because the corners we can set border radius and we can actually make these corners look look quite nice okay so we've got that one the one image now i'm going to duplicate the image and now there's there's two there's actually two sitting on top of each one that's on top of each other so um uh, sorry there's a question i uh, do the square brackets which look like this um work differently in css in css we don't use the square brackets we only use these curly braces okay hope that that gets the question um so as, as i was saying yeah there's actually two images yeah we've put two images in but because the absolute position at the bottom they're actually sitting on top of each other so there's let me show you there's one yeah and then there's another one yeah so we don't want that so what, what i do want is Don't want to confuse things so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to call this corner bottom and then i'm going to have another one corner top what we could have done is we could have actually had a corner class and then added onto that by having for example corner and then corner bottom and then we can have just sort of one baseline for css but for the newcomers i know that it's sort of just jumping too far ahead so what you're gonna have is just corner bottom and corner top but i want the top on top okay so corner bottom and actually this one's corner top uh, and then I've broken it, as you can see. This is the normal part of being a developer. Okay. So before I actually go and move it, I just want to show you that when you're actually working in HTML and CSS, always have your dev tools open. Yes, the dev tools on the right. Might not look exactly the same. For example, I've got dark mode. If you go to your settings here, you can actually choose dark mode. Um, but I was going to show you that, for example, uh, this element over here, I can actually go and select it, and I can actually use... Um, this code here to actually move it up and down um, so I'm just spinning my mouse wheel and you can see it's actually moving up and down so this is great if you're trying to position things and get it perfect I'm just going to save it so that everything is reset okay so now corner top needs to actually not have bottom it should actually be top okay so we got it there um, now the only thing is we need to transform it so we're going to say transform rotate and then what are we rotating No, that's not the right way. So do we go 270? So I'm very terrible with math. There we go. Um, okay. So, oopsie. Um, okay. So now we've actually got our corner pieces sitting on the edge and we've got, yeah, both of them sitting on the edge like that. Um, now the, the last thing that you would need to do here is you need to have an actual container you use for displaying information and that's usually to me i call that like a content co content container so i'm going to say div class is equal to um content container and and yeah and then we could just say uh, welcome to restaurant um okay so there's something i just need to discuss before i do build this out uh this part you'll see that i'm using wrappers and containers that is not like a rule that is just an opinionated thing that i am doing um no we're gonna have to go even further opinionated you will hear it a lot in development it means that one person or many people have have decided they like doing it this way but that's not the right or wrong way to do it it is just a way to do it and there's going to be lots of opinionated ways to do things so one one group of people might do one thing and one group of people might do another thing neither way is correct or you know or wrong um, and then you will have heated arguments between the two groups. Uh, but so what you see here, this wrapper and container, this is just an opinionated thing that I, I, I usually do, where if it's a wrapper, it usually just is just something containing your, your elements inside, whereas a container, which functions like a wrapper, is going to typically have actual content inside of it. Okay, so that, but you don't have to do it like this, um, and you won't always see it like this. Okay, so we've got we've got this uh, content container that we've got here. Um, I'll just I guess I'll create a new heading here, content container, which is content, um, and content container. Once again, um, 
And uh, by, by the way, by the way, I highly recommend uh, just doing a quick Google search when we're done on Rebecca Purple. There's quite a story there. Um, so once again, we're going and we're using uh, some colors uh, just to see what we actually, if we, if we are getting our results on our page, like you can immediately see, I'm like, I feel like, oh, there's something wrong here. I should be seeing this. So immediately we actually need to be adding this position absolute, but I'm lazy. I'm just going to go and steal it from here, throw it in. Um, okay, so we can see it over there. And then that means that we, we are on our way. We know we just got to do heart 100% and width 100%. Okay. Um, now I will just take the background off. And there we go. Uh, so now, lastly, I'll probably just display flex and justify content center and align item center. Okay, so now we've actually got our stuff displaying, displaying in the middle. Okay, everyone. Um, I've got a lot more that I can, I promise you, I can sit and talk for hours. So I'm actually going to, I guess, cut it off there for now and go through questions so that with the last 10 minutes that we can get all the questions in. Um, so before I just, anybody else ask anything, I just want to see. So in order for us, there's a question from Robert. Uh, in order for us to set absolute position to children, we need to set position relative to the parent. Um, from a parent, children, sibling relation, can you explain, please? Okay, so th there's going to be no sibling. Forget about the sibling. There's just going to be basically the parent. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, where is one that we can actually use? Let's, let's get rid of all this. Okay, so imagine we had an element that gets brought in. It's going to change the color so that it's uh, more visible. Okay. So usually when we've got an HTML page, uh, consider this white, the actual body. You know, on our actual document, we've got a body here at the top, right? There's a body that contains all of our content. So let me show you in the code here. Everything is between this body. Um, so usually that body is the parent. So when you set this position absolute, it's absolute to something. And it defaults to the entire body at first. So if I was to say left, it's going to go to the side. And if I was to say top zero, it's going to go to the top. If I say right zero, it's going to go to the right. And bottom zero, it's going to go to the bottom. Um, but now, usually you don't want that to always be happening. Uh, so what I can do is the CSS for this container, I can set position relative for this container. Um, and then this must be a div inside of this container. And then what happens is that I said absolute, it's not going to be constrained by this outside, the body. It's now going to be constrained by this parent that it's in. Um, so absolute is always going to be constrained to its parent, but that parent will be the very first element that's got position relative. Um, and I, I know that like while I'm speaking the theory of this, it might seem kind of weird, but I promise you, if you actually just get your hands a little bit dirty, um, and, and just play around, you'll see it's actually quite intuitive. Uh, so now that this is position relative, this, when I say top, it's gonna get, it's gonna stop here. And when I say left zero, it's gonna stop here. And right zero, it's gonna stop there. Okay, designer or developer uses colors based on, oh, that's that's from Benita. Okay, so Benita's our, our designer. Um, when it comes to design stuff, she is the person to see. I'm, I'm not much of a designer. <laughs> um, so is, is there any, uh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, Robert, is there uh, any question? Did that actually solve the question that you had? Does that make a bit more sense? Yeah. So while we're waiting for that, is there anybody else that, that possibly has any other questions? So let's bear with me. Okay, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to be super fast. Let's let's actually look at a, at a real sort of. Um, let's try and work with this practically. Here. Okay, so I've got this, and let's take all of this art. Okay, so what I've got here is I've actually just created another HTML page. Sorry, this text is super super tiny. So no, you can't have both absolute and relative positioning on the same element. Um, when it's relative, it's part of that document flow. When it's absolute, it ignores that. And it's basically like if it was a post-it note and you can just stick the post-it note wherever you want on the page. Um, 
uh, I was gonna I was gonna go and try and get an example here, but I don't I don't think I'm gonna be able to conjure it up in the next six minutes. I apologize for that. What I could do probably after this is um maybe another video that that does that does uh cover it. So how where did you put the picture used for the corners? So so that that picture that I used for the corners, this is basically these corners is basically just um. It's just an image that's in the code. Sorry, there's there's a folder that's got the images. Um, and unfortunately, okay, VS Code is actually opening it. Um, so it's just a corner piece like this with a transparent background. When you see when you see these squares, it means that it's got a transparent background or offer background. Um, and and yeah, so this is how it is. This is just how it looks. And basically, what we're doing is we take. Wait, maybe I could do this. No, it's not going to work. Um, so we, we take that image and we move it across so that it's sitting over here on the right. And then we do the same thing because it's position absolute um, to this parent, which is the menu. Then we can also push it down to the bottom um, and, and move it over. Okay, so and then Joachim said that uh, the question that I was going to answer is that what if you want to place an element inside of that element again? There's, there's not a problem. Like, you, you can do that. Uh, so... You, you need to be thinking about this, like I said, with Photoshop layers. So what we've done here, when we created these uh, these layers, sorry, these these div containers, think of it as Photoshop layers. So if we go to Photoshop here, um, think of it as that there was one layer here. Okay, wait, 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 let me, I think I can do this quickly. Um, so this was our main menu picture. Then we had another one, but now this one is going to be that opacity where we make it go, uh, we change the color to remember we made it like that darker that darker menu so that the layers actually work that way um then we had the one that's the opacity sorry the the uh sorry not the opacity the gradient so he has the gradient one so can you see how these are i know i'm sorry i can't zoom in on on my screen yeah i wish i could so you could see this a bit better but these uh this is what i could do for you <laughs> clever okay so these layers yeah are the same as our divs. We've got our one div on the top, which is our gradient. Actually, it is, yeah, it's a gradient. Then the next one was the color overlay, this one over here. And then there was actually the, the restaurant, uh, sorry, the, the actual menu image. But so we're building layers upon layers uh, to get to get to this stage. And and like I said, this is, this is not something that you're gonna find many people teaching you. It's sort of uh, stuff that I've just specialized in over the years is creating designs like this. Um, and, and, uh, sort of the, the, the bonus that you're getting by, by learning through Norof is that we're going to be showing you really, really cool stuff like this, um, to really push that, to push the bar. Like if, if you, your mind is, you know, matrix take, I think it's the red pool or whatever that hopefully your mind is sort of starting to see all the, the just the millions of possibilities that you could do that if you can build something out in Photoshop, it looks really, really cool. Then you can translate it to CSS. Um, so, sorry, just back, back to that question about, about the, the, the nested divs. So those, those layers that we're using are so that we can overlay them. But then finally, when you've actually got your content container, this is going to follow the flow of the document. So what we can do inside this one now is actually structure our content like we usually would. So I can have my H1 here, uh, Francino, I think is what I called the other restaurant, restaurant. Okay, um, so it's this 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 content container, we're gonna go and just put it in display flex and have our flex direction column. So that means that our text is just our flow is downwards. Um, because we've already got a flex container going here. Uh so if if it flex usually displays things in a row, um, and we need to make it display things in a column. So that's that's just what I'm doing here. So I know a lot of this stuff will be for those that are new, this is gonna be a little bit foreign, but but don't worry, you will see that when the time comes it will be quite intuitive. So you asked, how about the body? So the body, yes, it is the body is relative by default. It's going to position automatically to the body. So we actually had to set position relative on our actual menu. Can you remember during the video we didn't have position relative on our on our on our menu? So what happened is we ended up having that leather skin all the way over our whole document, and and we don't want that to actually happen. Um, so yeah, so basically now in our content container, this is actually following the actual normal flow of the document. So we can go and add like an image in here. 
um like over here i can go and i can actually add an image so let's just let's just grab one of our random images we've got here i'll try uh leaf background sorry that that was another part of the page so you can see it's 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 far too big but it's actually flowing the normal flow of the document these are more like layers that we've we've put behind our flow so that we can make things quite quite arty okay how many text font styles can we use and what do you think five types of fonts no no never mm -mm. <laughs> I, I've, I've previously worked and I, I was put in charge of optimization um, and it was a nightmare but something I've learned is that like you don't go over two fonts um, th this is an opinionated thing so someone might come along and say look it's fine to load 10 fonts but your mobile sites need to typically be b below 250 kilobytes and that is nothing 250 kilobytes is nothing um, it's a quarter of a, of a megabyte uh, and fonts are huge they are huge to the payload for your website when, when you're starting out now sure you can experiment with four to five fonts but when you're actually working in the field a page taking one second longer is going to cost you like over 15 percent of your sales and in for a company that's making millions of dollars 15 percent of that means that there's a lot of money and that that's that's a, a lot of money that's your problem um so usually you can't get away with more than two fonts you would usually just have one font for your heading and then the rest and then the other font for your body and and remember when when it comes to a font it's not just one font you've got to have uh your font weight 400 your font weight 700 your font weight three, 300 um, and basically when i'm saying your font weight i mean how is it bold is it thin um so when when you got one font you might have a bold you might have a, a, a thin and you might have like the normal so that's three fonts on its own already built in um and then you're going to get another font in and that's going to have two fonts on its own or so two two types so I'm, I'm really bad when it comes to the top definition so i think what two two variants of that font and, th and then then you're sitting with with just two fonts is actually five variants that are actually being loaded in um and and so that that's not going to work so i've had to strip projects down and it basically only only two fonts after there was just no way that it would fit it after two fonts um Okay, so you set up here is nice in one screen. Do you template view for your editor, browser, dev tools? How do you set that up? Okay, uh, I highly recommend more than one monitor. I, I can't, uh, my daughter, I bought my daughter a monitor because she's she makes YouTube videos. So I bought her a 4K monitor so she can record. But then it, it broke on its way. So I had to sacrifice my monitor. Um, but what usually happens is I've got a monitor on the side as well as a monitor above my screen. And what will happen is that this code will be full screen, my code's full screen, then this is on another on another browser. So that I save my code here and I can immediately see it appear in another way. Um, the biggest part of programming to me is is workflow. You need to, like, if you don't have a good workflow, you're just not going to be amazing at what you're doing. If you can get your workflow down, then I believe you're going to, the world's your oyster after you get your workflow down. And and part of that, I just I just personally don't believe you can develop on one screen. Um, but I'm not saying go out and buy another screen, please. I'm not saying go and, you know, steal your holiday money and go buy a new screen or something of the sort. But I just highly recommend doing it. Um, trying to work on one screen, even on like one laptop screen, it's, just, it's really frustrating. And then if you're frustrated, it's, you don't really want to work, you know. Um, so if I can give you one tip when it comes to like a view for everything is to use use a template. Uh, sorry, so use, use another screen. I don't have a template though for... For the way that i code usually what i've got um is i split it up and down like this but i usually have four screens so i guess let's just make it bigger um so i'm, I'm going to shrink it down so that you can two cheap screens better than one expensive one oh i don't know i think i think let, let if you can ask that in chat then i think let's get some opinions because i'm i'm, I'm to be honest i'm not really much much of a hardware guy this is zubuntu i'm running in a virtual machine uh the uh uh my Apple operating system is actually Windows 10, but Windows does not play well with Node.js. Windows, Microsoft themselves, they actually say on their website, you can do some kind of programming in, in um, Windows, but you need to switch to WSL if you're doing anything serious. Um, and what that is, is basically Linux that runs inside of Windows. Uh, but I, I don't like the idea of that. What I'm running here is a virtual box, uh, virtual machine. Um, and I've installed Zubuntu, which is Linux or Linux, and a very, very small version. And what this does is basically, uh, if my computer crashes, I just need to copy paste my whole uh, virtual machine and I can run it on any computer. 
Um, so backing up is just a matter of copy pasting. That's it done. I don't have to ever worry about losing my working environment. Uh, and it actually gives me goosebumps to know that it's that safe for me. I could just copy paste it, ready to go. Um, and if I run, if I run, you know, your students are sending me viruses. <laughs> I'm joking. No one's, no one's ever sent me a virus. Um, then I can run it. I can run my code here um, safely without being concerned about anything. Uh, so I do highly recommend uh, VirtualBox. And by the way, VirtualBox, I, I see there's a question here. Um, is VirtualBox expensive? It doesn't cost a cent. It doesn't cost you anything. It's basically, um, it lets you run virtual machines. Uh, um, actually, where is it? It's not yet. Okay, so this is VirtualBox. Let me just open it. So you can see here it is. Um, and it's just basically, it's running an operating system inside your operating system. It's like a fake computer. It's, it's a software computer. Um, and I've actually even got Mac. Uh, Mac. I've got Mac OS. In case I ever need to go and debug in um, Apple Safari because... Oh, it's a nightmare. You will all learn in the future how Apple is not really the greatest company we always thought it was to be. And to try and debug things on their system, you have to run Safari on an, an actual Mac OS. Um, it's really strange like that. Like even on your phone, when you're actually loading, if you've got an Apple and you use Chrome, or and it's actually important, if you're using Chrome or Firefox, you are still using Apple's own Safari system, even though it says Chrome and Firefox. It's, it's, not, it's actually built on Apple's own framework. So you can't even properly debug. So to probably debug an actual Mac OS device, you need to either have an actual Mac OS or you need to have um, one of the devices. So you could do things and it don't save on the computer. No, it's it saves. It's saving on its own. It's got its own built-in hard drive. Um, it's, it's like a software hard drive. Uh, for this, I've allocated 400 gigabytes, which is absolutely huge. And that takes up space on my actual computer. Then to back up, um, it's a huge amount of data I need to back up. But to back up, I literally just copy paste that entire folder over and that's it um i've had i've had my computer break before in the past and to, to just get back up and running it took me five minutes i just copied the folder back and that was it done okay but it, it shouldn't cost a cent nothing should really cost you anything on this course apart from the books um as far as i know i don't i don't believe anything you shouldn't have to pay for anything and if there is sort of something you do want to be paying for like yeah i think but i also think that someone mentioned adobe but i think adobe xd might actually be free um so i, I guess apart from adobe in the books you shouldn't have to pay for anything but if, if you are thinking of paying for something please speak to us first uh so for example like you might have thought that virtual virtual box will cost you something nope it's going to cost you a cent um okay right everyone uh I'm, I'm free to continue asking questions i'm more than happy to sit but for those that that you know um, that they need to go, please you you're more than welcome to leave. I don't want you to feel like it's rude and you have to continue sitting here. Um, I don't I don't mind continuing on. We can look at some more questions. Uh, but for you for you for those of you that do need to go, uh, thank you for joining us. Really do appreciate you taking the time to try and improve yourself. Uh, and don't forget that if there's anything you need assistance with in regards to the coursework, please come and speak to us. No, no question is stupid, I promise you. We are not going to judge you. We're not going to think you're silly or anything of the sort. We we were in the same position at some point in time. Right. Okay, so you have, have a great day. Um, I will continue, though, for the rest of us that, that, you know, anybody else that wants to try and sit and discuss things. Okay, Robert, I'm going to try and, and handle these. There's a bit of interpretation. That I, need to, I need to understand what's been asked here. Um, and I don't, I don't want to make everybody just stare at, stare at um, my screen while I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll definitely hop onto that. Are, are there any, any other questions that anybody's uh, you know, keen, keen on asking? Yeah, we, we're actually looking at bringing VirtualBox into the actual curriculum. So... Uh, you should you should probably find more information on that in the near future. Okay, all I think that's that's gonna we're gonna call that a wrap. Uh, oh wait, I got I got Tron that's asked me a question. So Tron, uh, could you just is there maybe a line number that you could you could refer to on my screen? Let me zoom back out. Sorry, back in. Could you possibly give me the line number that you are referring to? Here's the line numbers over here, and we usually use it to easily identify the code someone else is referring to is which line are you are you possibly speaking about 11 and 12 okay so page wrapper um 
was basically this outside container uh, that you don't always usually you don't usually have to have it it's basically like my own version of a body um, I don't like styling on the body I want my body to remain completely clean uh, apart from some basic stuff like this where you just put some margin and some height the rest of the stuff and this is just an opinionated thing uh, I, I don't like putting my styling on my body just some basic stuff so what I usually have is inside the body then is a main wrapper for my page um, and I'll show you why this is yes actually let's let's drop this let's drop this quickly I've got a really cool thing to to actually demonstrate here um, sorry just bear with me let me get this stuff there's something like a bonus a bonus tip here and students keep asking about it and um something I'd love to just just be able to squash it very quickly okay so I'm gonna take this out bear with me um Let's do that trick where we go uh, div and then page wrapper. So this is the new file with uh, new CSS. It's not going to be that old file that we had. Um, so I'm just going to take all of this out. Okay, so this is a different file. It's not going to be our menu stuff. It's going to be completely different. Let's just add a background color. Pink. Okay, now I've just got a link. Um, let's put this down here. And then, and then, and then, sorry, I, I think it was Christopher, someone that asked about how I usually lay it out. Usually what I've got is uh, HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript, uh, depending on the project I'm working on. If it's just basic HTML, then it's nice. You've got HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and it's very easy to change anything wherever you want. Um, but if you're doing a lot of JavaScript coding, then it's probably, the stuff is going to be hidden away. Or they might be on a, their own pane on the side, and JavaScript will have the full window. Okay, so we're going to have that page here. we just got to change the style sheet to this new one that we called it. Okay, so we should okay so there we got our pink so now this is gonna this is gonna be why why um try and very important why actually do this page wrapper okay so we've got our body and then we've actually got our page wrapper and this page wrapper must expand the whole thing now typically what you're gonna have after this is you're gonna have your header this is my header um and then you're gonna have your main it's my main and then you're gonna have your footer um, and we have covered this before, but we do have new people. This is my footer, but it's also going to explain why I use the page wrapper. This is my footer. So let's save it. So we've got our content here, um, and we've got our display flex container that shouldn't have the centering stuff. Okay, so there's that, and let's just take out that white text. Okay. Okay, so we've got this flex container, and inside we've got our header, main, and footer. Let me just, just go and style those very quickly. I'm not even going to use classes. If you see here, I've not actually put the dot or the full stop or the period. Um, this now means I'm actually targeting, targeting an actual element instead of an actual class. Okay, so I'm actually just going to say background red. As you can see, there's the header there. Then we're going to have the main and then the footer. And there's the main. And then the footer. Okay, we just haven't changed that to footer though. Okay, and then... What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to turn off this flex so that you can see what usually happens. Okay, so here's the page as it usually happens. You're going to have your header at the top, and you're going to have a main, and you're going to have a footer. That other stuff was happening because I used display flex. Display flex is amazing, by the way. It's like the best thing they could have ever met, brought to CSS. Um, so this is how it's usually going to look. Uh, but this isn't going to work for us. We want header to be up here. We want main to take up most of the page, and we want footer at the bottom. And now this is incredibly easy to do if you've got a main page wrapper like I've done, where... On the outside, remember, we've got this main page wrapper. What I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some padding here. So the padding's added the spacing on the outside, just so that it's easier for you to identify what's going on. Okay, so we've got our header, um, and I just want to make it have a heart of like 100 pixels. Yeah, that's great. Um, and then I'm going to also have a heart of 100 pixels for my footer, our footer. Okay, now our main. What do we do about this? We want this footer at the bottom, and I promise you, there are too many. There are just too many pages where this is how it looks. They don't expect the content to be here, so they think that everything's fine. Like, uh, I'll show you what I mean. Here. Um, just trying to think of how I could demonstrate this. Okay, so <laughs> sorry, but so yeah, it's usually what happens, right? They've got all of their content in here. And they think, okay, great. Our website looks great. Foot is down there. Head is up. Yeah, no problem. We call it a day. Let's go. Let's go fishing. No, that's not the case. Because as soon as you usually go to like the contact page or the about page where there's limited content, 
what suddenly happens? It shifts up like that, um, and that's that's a problem. Uh, and this this is an age age old problem. Uh, so one way of doing it is basically you would set the height for your main to be a hundred percent, but now you actually need to do a calculation. You actually need to do a calculation of your height minus the header height and minus the footer height um, to basically get the correct the correct thing here. So let's let's actually do that calculation. So in CSS you can do a calculation. You just write the calc keyword and it's one of the very few functions you get in CSS um, and it's actually it's actually kind of clever so you can say I want 100 percent minus our 100 pixels for the header and then minus another 100 pixels for the footer um, and this is the most math you'll ever have to do in this course yeah so you can see now that it's actually sort of fitting the page correctly um, there is something that we haven't done yet uh, and I just haven't set so I've put an asterisk here, asterisk, it's the star. That basically selects everything throughout the entire page. Um, box size. Wait, what? Box sizing. Okay, this is going to be a topic for another day. Uh, but okay. So you can see now with this calculation, we've actually got, we've actually got this, um, this main is now stretching out the full content of the heart and the footer. Uh, so this is a question. What art do you recommend for responsive website? Um, usually it's a hearts of a hundred view art, but you need to run a bit of JavaScript. If you're really trying to make the most perfect website in the whole world, you've got problems on, for example, Samsung devices, where when you use a Samsung device, there's a bar that pops up. So to get the most perfect, perfect, perfect responsive site, um, you, you've got to use hundred view art and then a calculation for Samsung devices. Um, Okay, so you can see we've achieved this with this calculation. But then if I change my header height to 120 pixels, it's not going to work anymore because I haven't made that 120 over here. So uh, this is, this is, I don't like this. This is, it's not, it's not um, maintainable. A main, big part of programming is things need to be maintainable so that when you make a change somewhere, it's not going to break everything else. And this, this is breaking everything else. So this is just, it's not a good solution. Um, there's a much better way to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to get rid of this, this heart here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add display flex onto our page wrapper. Um, and now what display flex does is it, uh, it's like a magic container. It's honestly the only way I can describe it. Um, and in its default settings, what it does is it puts things in a row like this. So remember, our, I remember our elements were in, in sort of a column. Uh, it puts it in a row, but that's easy to fix. We just go and say flex direction um, column. And, and don't worry, if you're not at this point in your course, if you're not at this part in your course, don't worry. Like, this stuff will come. Don't worry. Um, okay. So we've got display flex on our main wrapper. Now in our main, magic. Remember we had the calculations, all of that? Uh-uh, no more. We just go flex, grow, one, done. Now we can actually go fishing. Um, so highly recommend using this in the future. So simple. You just basically need to have a wrapper with display flex and flex direction column. And and then just flex grow on your main and and then you go yeah so this is this solves an age-old problem it's like this it's called the trifecta or something of the sort right everybody i think we're gonna have to leave it at that stage i don't want this video to be too long um yeah so we'll probably ask for feedback after this please feel free to just, um just send your feedback there and probably also ask what you what other uh content you'd like to have covered in in the next probably next three or four sessions Okay, um, Christopher, I'll, I'll discuss the rest with you after this. Uh, Christopher just asked where can we find a good source on the Samsung stuff that I mentioned. I'll, I'll give you a link when we're done here. Okay, everybody, I'm going to stop screen sharing here. Okay, uh, great. I hope you had a wonderful day. Sorry, o Osman, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I see you got your hand up. I, I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't. I missed that earlier. Um, do you still have a question? No, I think we're good. Okay, all. I'm going to leave it here. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate uh, you joining us today, and see you around. Cheers.